test.
Good day, everyone. Um, we still have approximately another minute before before we kick this off, so make sure that you uh, refill your coffee cups and then we'll get started. All right, so welcome back to another uh, Bicep uh, live stream. This is the third live stream in our series, and we are glad you uh, all made it back um, because you want to learn a little bit more about Bicep. And today we will focus on, um, well, more advanced topics, uh, structures, um, and uh, we also cover modules um, and will reveal the secret what uh, modules actually are. Um, so we'll dive into four different areas today. But before we do that, uh, two more things. So number one, the session will be recorded um, and we will add it to our playlist afterwards. Um, so no no worries if uh, if you couldn't make it, so you will ha have it available afterwards. And the link to uh, the full series is in the deck as well. And second, if you have any questions, um, please use the Q&A uh, window to ask we will try to answer the questions during the presentation uh, or if we for some reason cannot answer uh, the questions during we will definitely answer the questions after the presentation at the very end all right let's quickly introduce introduce us uh, and we'll start with martin hey good evening or good morning wherever you are uh, so i'm martin so besides being in myself sidekick uh, in this uh, bicep series, I'm uh, an actor MUT uh, based in Norway and work for a company here called Vips. It's a payment platform uh, for mobile payments and also merchants and uh, stores and so on. Um, apart from that, I like to ski in the winter and I have a race car that I drive during the summer. So. Uh, that's my short intro. All right, thanks very much. Um, yeah, some words about myself. I'm also an Azure MVP. I work uh, out of Switzerland, so I work for Software One. We help customers with uh, uh, their full uh, transformation journey towards the cloud. Um, and I'm the team lead uh, for, for a local team that's located here in Switzerland. Um, and beside my day job, I uh, well, deliver presentations every now and then, mainly uh, about Azure or Microsoft Cloud um, topics. So we're happy to be here. And uh, that said, let's dive into the four um, topics we want to cover. And as uh, with, um, well, as always, uh, I, I will do the talking, um, uh, work on the slide deck together with you, and then Martin will take care of all the exciting demos. All right. So. Um, it's in the title and it says uh, I want to talk about Azure uh, Bicep modules. So what are modules? Modules allow you to uh, decompose your code. So imagine you have uh, a complex application that you want to deploy. Uh, even if you're using Bicep compared to ARM, this could, this could lead to lots of code, right? And what we want to do is we want to create 
kind of reusable elements. And this is exactly what modules are. So modules allow you to define, uh, to allow us to define uh, code fragments that we store in bicep files because a module is nothing but a bicep file that has parameters that uh, deploys something and that generates output. And at the very end, it's nothing but a bicep file that is called by another bicep file. So you kind of decompose your code across multiple bicep files. And at the very end, you deploy your main or your master bicep file. It will call all the different modules uh, to generate the final code. So this is actually what modules are. Now what's also possible is that you nest a module within a module. And so that means that just as an example, you could have a module for every single resource type that you want to deploy into the Azure platform. And then again, have kind of uh, modules on the next level that use certain of these first level modules to deploy a more complex service, such as let's say a web, a web application that also needs a, a SQL Server in the database. And then this module could be called from uh, your main deployment file. Right At the very end, what happens behind the scenes is uh, when you consume a module, um, that code is kind of constructed for you and a so-called nested template is created. So at the very end, we will deploy nested code and you will see afterward what's, what, what that actually means. Now to consume a module, you can see the example here, we use the module keyword. Right, so um, instead of deploying a resource, we uh, use the module keyword saying, all right, um, I want to use a module, which means I want to um, somehow use code that lives in some other bicep file. I need to assign again an identifier to my consumed module. Uh, and then I define, well, where my, my, my bicep file actually is. And in this case here, it's just a module that deploys a single subnet. And then, of course, depending on that uh, module you're consuming, uh, you need to submit input parameter values, such as in this case, the, the, the name or the address prefix um, and the virtual network name. So it's the same, more or less, as deploying a resource, but you're deploying something that you prepared in your own bicep file. Good, so that will be a, a, a big, a big, uh, um, chunk of, uh, of Martin's demo afterwards. Then a second thing that's uh, important to understand is that there are times when you will not deploy everything in one go, right? So that means you might somehow deploy something that uh, is dependent or that has kind of a connection to an already existing resource. So in this case, you can see that in the second part, I'm again deploying um, uh, a subnet by using a module, but um, the network itself, so the virtual network is obviously already deployed onto the Azure platform. Now, of course, I could also deploy the network uh, with this, but uh, if I only want to deploy in this case, a subnet and attach that to, a, to an already existing network, then I, I somehow need to have this information available to uh, instruct the subnet module, which network the subnet should go to, right? And for that, um, I use the resource uh, keyword here, but instead of deploying the virtual network, I use this existing keyword saying, well, this is already existing, so don't deploy this, but get the information from it and I will tell you where it is. So in this case, it's a VNet01 that lives in some resource group uh, with the name AVD in this case. Um, and by that, I now have all the properties of this virtual network available and I can use the different properties, for instance, to deploy my subnet by using the module afterwards, because there, of course, I need to submit the virtual network name. Um, and um, as you can see here, I just reference to the virtual network um, resource that is using the existing VNet. So this is also a very important um, uh, thing you need to understand because very often you have kind of a core infrastructure already deployed and then you will just kind of hook up or connect to the already re existing resources. 
All right, the third element um, or process we want to discuss is conditions. Um, now, what is this? Um, depending on your on your scenario, it's possible that you don't want to deploy all the described resources or modules all the time. So maybe you just want to deploy parts of your code um, because you just want to test something, right? Um, and for that, we have another keyword, um, which is if, so it's the if keyword. And you can use that for resources and for modules. So that means you can describe a resource, but instead of deploying it every time, you use the if keyword saying, well, only deploy this resource if some condition is true. And the same is actually true if you uh, want to uh, deploy something using a module. Exactly the same. So use the module keyword and use the if keyword after that saying, well, only deploy this module um, if something is uh, actually true. And you can see at the bottom how this how this works. So there's a condition that is checked. And if this condition resolves to true, the resource or the module will be deployed. If it resolves to false, it will not be deployed. Right. And you can use uh, Boolean values. Um, such as here, so you could have a parameter in your code saying, well, I have a deploy parameter that I can set to true or false and then uh, use the value of this in my if condition. Um, but then you can also use, uh, for instance, string values. So you want to check some parameter that is submitted as a string value and depending on that value, um, I want to deploy a resource or not. So this gives you total flexibility. And also here to give you a quick example, you can see in this case, again, I describe uh, my module I want to use to deploy a subnet, but instead of uh, deploying it all the time, I want to be able to control the deployment with a, a deploy parameter. So deploy in this case would be a parameter that I set to either true or false. And again, if it resolves to true here, um, then the subnet will be deployed. Otherwise, it will not be deployed. So this is how conditions works. All right, and finally, um, you also need to understand uh, deployment scopes. Now, when you deploy a BICEP file, there's three different scopes you can use to deploy. BICEP files, and, th and the same is true for, for ARM templates, right? So whenever you deploy um, um, BICEP, uh, it's up to you to decide, well, is this code deployed to a resource group, which is mainly used if you deploy uh, new resources, or do you want to deploy something at the subscription management group or tenant level? So this, for instance, uh, is used when you want to deploy policy definitions or uh, role assignments, those kind of things. Right. And so when you create your BICEP file um, and it's ready to be deployed, you then start a deployment, for instance, using the, uh, the AC uh, commands or the Azure CLI. And from there you define, all right, so I want to deploy my code into a resource group or I want to deploy my code into a subscription. So you select the scope when you actually start or initiate the deployment. All right. Um, but now there are times when you want to deploy your code, for instance, at multiple scopes or to multiple resource groups. So let's say you deploy a service and the service uh, is built uh, based on whatever um, two service components that should live in different resource groups. That at the very end means that you first need to deploy the resource groups, so the empty resource groups. And a resource group needs to be deployed at subscription level, right? But then in the same code, you want to have all the resources that will later be deployed into these two new resource groups, right? And that deployment obviously needs to go into the resource group itself. So it will be a resource group uh, level deployment, right? And to actually make this controllable so that we can deploy whatever we want at the scope that we want, we can define what scope a specific element goes to. 
So as you can see here, um, in this module that I'm consuming, which does nothing but deploy a resource group, I use this scope keyword saying, well, please uh, use the subscription scope um, for the subscription I'm connected to right now. And that would mean that I could now take this bicep code, deploy it into a resource group, for instance, but the resource group here that's described um, at, at this level will still be deployed at the subscription level and it will not go into resource group because obviously that will not work. Right. So that means you can mix and match different elements, resources and modules that are deployed to different scopes by using the scope keyword. That's very important for larger deployments. All right, so enough said. Um, and I will hand over for Martin now for his demos. Martin. Ah, oh, perfect. So let me just pull up my screen. So here we are in my latest bicep files. So for those of you who have followed these sessions, you know that everything from from our live live streams are available on on GitHub, and this one is uh, as well. Um, and that's for you to consume however you want in and also watch that, uh, our videos that we will, uh, like myself said, publish a little bit later. Um, just so um, to kind of start with where Marcel finished, um, I have this um, folder structure where I have uh, a few modules uh, and I also have this main file. You, it doesn't have to be called main.bicep, but uh, that's what it's uh, called uh, in, in this particular instance. So for this to, to work as it is uh, created now, I need to set my scope. There's a few ways that you can do this, but in this case, I'm setting the target scope at my main uh, file, my main.bicep file. And the reason I do this is I want to create resource groups. So here I have the resource and I am calling the resource group uh, provider directly from my main file. And that's why I need to set the target scope at the subscription. So the subscription that I'm connected to uh, is my target scope. And since all resources live inside the resource group, I need to then reference the resource group I just created uh, up here when I am consuming the module. So I have a SQL module down here, uh, and I call it uh, with the this um, module function. So then I I want to place this SQL server into the resource group that I created just above, and then I set the scope to uh, to this uh, resource group. So that's an implicit dependency that we have. Uh, discuss, uh, talked about a little bit uh, earlier or in our earlier uh, streams. So I can just reference the this friendly name and it will create an implicit uh, uh, dependency uh, on that resource group. So it will know that it needs to create the, uh, the resource group before it starts on the modules uh, section. And down here we have we have to specify the name this is the deployment name. So like myself said, we have nested deployments in the end. So an ARM on the Azure Cloud side um, translates this into essentially ARM templates. It will, it will collapse everything into uh, a single file with a nested deployment. And then I need to pass in all the parameters that are mandatory or the additional uh, parameters for the uh, for the module that I that I would like to pass in. 
you can see that I am using a Boolean value and I have an integer value and I am also getting some of the parameters from my main file. So I can uh, set the, uh, parameters on the name uh, main file and use the same parameters in the modules call. If we then take a look at the SQL file or the SQL module, so everything is just bicep files. It doesn't matter how you structure, or it does matter how you structure it because uh, there are some limitations here and there. But in, in general, everything is, is just bicep files. The main is a bicep file and the module itself is a bicep file. And you can basically say that everything is a module. So if we go into this um, equal module, and there's no scope defined in the top of this file. So the scope was set in the main file and also in the modules, scope, uh, modules call. So the, this uh, SQL file is, uh, is a standard uh, running on the standard scope. So if we would deploy this uh, alone without uh, doing it from the main file, it would be a resource group level uh, deployment because that's uh, the default. Uh, level of deployment. So this module uses everything and beyond what we have uh, shown in our earlier or previous um, uh, live stream. So we have uh, using functions to create unique strings for the SQL server name. Uh, we have uh, conditional uh, deployments down here somewhere. And we also have this uh, array or object configuration based on what kind of uh, SQL database server type we're using. So it's a uh, general purpose uh, hyperscale. And it's using now, it's kind of concatenating the inputted uh, capacity from, from the parameter and setting the the uh, correct uh, skew uh, when we are actually deploying the uh, the resource. Again, uh, manipulating what's being inputted, so we know that this storage account for the SQL server audit logs and so on will be uh, correct for what the uh, storage account provider need, uh, can handle. So you can. You can't have hyphens, for example, so you need to translate them to and remove those, and so on. Also, again, max character of 24 for the storage account that we have talked about uh, previously, uh, only lowercase uh, letters, etc. Using the same location as the resource group, yet another function that is uh, that we have talked about, and. Also, let's find some of the conditions. So here we have the if. So I only want audit logs to be enabled on this server if the environment input is set to prod or so production. Um, again, um, a little bit further down, we have this sort of tenary uh, sorry, uh, condition. So, uh, hyperscale database do not support uh, the zone redundancy. So then we set if you choose hyperscale as the uh, as a type of SQL server, then it's false. For anything else, it's true. Uh, that's just using all the tricks that we have showed you earlier, but in the very end now, just to create some confusion or to show how modules actually are modular. Now, yeah, and again, setting R back uh, and stuff for the, uh, for the SQL server. So down in the end here, you can see that we have this uh, if statement again. So this is 
based on the Boolean value that we are sending from the main file. So this Boolean value called connect to VNet, that's set to true. It's not mandatory, but we want to connect this SQL Server to uh, VNet. But since all my VNets are handled by another code base, I need to, to uh, they, they, the VNets do not have the same life cycle as my SQL servers. So I handle all uh, VNets in a separate code base. Uh, but I still want this SQL server to be connected to it. And I am, I am now calling a module uh, which I named existing vnet.bicep and I only want to, the, to do this if I pass in this Boolean value connect to vnet. This module is um, a little bit different from what uh, what you've probably seen before. Uh, I need to pass in some information from this SQL uh, module. And the VNet itself in, does not necessarily need to live in the same subscription or resource group that the SQL server is deployed to. So now we can kind of have an inception of modules, different subscriptions, uh, cross subscriptions or resource groups and so on. And also these, this uh, existing vnet.bicep file, it does not deploy the vnets itself. So depending on, actually this is only allowed to pass in SQL, but again, I am referring to existing VNets. The, the module is uh, responsible for connecting the virtual network rules, but not responsible for handling the VNets itself. So you can imagine if I want to extend this module to allow connection for storage accounts to the same VNets or uh, and another subnet or the same subnets, then I can expand or extend this resource type function or parameter up here to allow for storage to be inputted, for example. And then since my, my um, equal server is not uh, deployed in the same resource group or uh, subscription as the SQL server, I need to pass in which uh, or subscription is it with uh, uh, resource name and resource group and so on. And then I can handle this, everything in the environment configuration down here. So this is where my uh, VNets live. They live in a separate subscription. And the SQL subnet is uh, based on the environment. So if it's production, then it's called SQL prod uh, dash net. I pass in uh, everything that I need to, for this module. Then it calls or uses this existing decorator. And I am traversing through this through this object like I shown you earlier. So you are moving or basically navigating this uh, environment config, uh, getting the correct uh, subnets and then again an if statement so if the resource type uh, sent to this module is of type SQL then we are getting this server and then I have as you can see here I have set the scope for where I can find this server that was deployed in the main file Oh, oh no, sorry, the SQL file over here. I am passing in the resource subscription and the resource are, uh, resource group to this uh, existing VNet module. And from there, I can use this to actually provision the virtual network rules. So now we have 
some sort of inception around modules and, and cross uh, subscription deployments. And again, we need to reference the SQL server name coming from this, this existing. Uh, no, sorry, this one. So you're just getting information about the server that we just uh, provisioned, and then we can grab the subnet ID, which we get from, from here. And then it will be deployed. When everything is done, it's three modules. We have this main file, creates the resource group, and then we have the SQL module, and then we are using the reference for existing VNets in a separate module. You could, of course, reference the VNets inside the SQL module, but if you imagine you have multiple uh, resource module uh, all capable of connecting to a VNet, then you need to, if you change the VNet names or something like that, you need to manage all the files. That's why I uh, had this example where you put it into a, into a separate uh, module. So how does it look? We can go into the visualizer and then you can see we have the SQL server uh, resource group. Uh, we have existing subnets module and we have the SQL module in the outer ring. And we also have inside here the individual sub-resource sites of the SQL. So back up uh, the DB itself, uh, the audits, uh, vulnerability assessments, rollbacks access control, uh, stuff like that. Let's try to deploy it. It will take a couple of minutes. But, um, so when this is deploying, uh, let's take a look at how a large infrastructure deployment can actually look when you go into production. This is an example from my, uh, my daily job. So you can see that my main file calls a magnitude of submodules that again calls another set of submodules. Sub so this is just one example to show how you can grow and how you can modularize your entire infrastructure deployment. So if you zoom a little bit in, you can see there's a lot of uh, you have vaults, you have secrets, uh, access policies, uh, VNets, NSPs, everything is kind of connected to the resource group. Now, going in uh, to our deployments, you can see that the bicep module demo SQL, that's the name of the, um, the deployment here. Now it's it's finished with the resource group, started the modules call for, for SQL. And, um, and it also called this connect subnet uh, module. You can see inside this, uh, oh, it's completed, but you, you if, if you would have checked it before you completed, you would see that it was individual deployments inside the uh, the uh, SQL module as well. And this SQL server should now be connected to our network as well. So going into firewalls and virtual network, you can see I passed in production as my environment and it's connected to pod vnet and that is and inside existing vnet module so if i pass in prod it will use this as a as a value when calling the existing subnets 
I think that, Marcel, this is what I had to show. Uh, do you see any questions coming in or uh, is everyone uh, silent? Uh, well, first off, thanks for the demo. That was pretty impressive. Um, uh, I can imagine if if you've seen modules for the first time, this was a little bit complex, but I think if, if people dive into your code that is published uh, in the repository, they will uh, definitely better understand how this works. But thanks a lot for the demo. That was great. Um, and th there is no question, but as there is no question, I will have two questions for you. Um, the first one is now as you have a deployment that deploys uh, a resource group and then the resources into this new resource group, we have seen that, um, well, you have showed the deployment progress, right, at the resource group level, but how can people actually see the resource group itself, so where the resource group is deployed? Can you maybe quickly show that at the subscription level, so where, where you see the subscription uh, yeah. level deployments, so just to complete this picture? Yes, of course. Uh, so that will be a subscription level deployment. So in the portal, you will see that, well, at least it says failed here. I'm not sure that's probably something that hangs, but you will see that in the resource group will be deployed in, in at the resource group level. So down here, you see deploy the resource groups, and then the module for SQL is uh, at the resource group level. So I guess Azure has some <laughs> issues with showing the correct icons. So it's <laughs> completed and not completed, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. But I think that's also important to understand that, um, of course, you first have to, well, not first, but if you want to uh, um, somehow monitor the subscription level deployments, you really have to do that at subscription level, obviously. Mm. And yeah. then for all the resource group level deployments um, for those elements, you go down to the to the appropriate resource groups. Yeah, I guess you can see the, I'm not sure if you can see the entire chain or if you have to actually move about and, and stuff like that inside. If you want to look at it from the portal, that is, but if you get your deployment through PowerShell or something, you will see all the steps that it has, has performed. So again, in the deployment section, you can see connected to subnet and uh, the SQL module. So that's, uh, that's true. Perfect, thanks a lot. And then maybe a second question I have um, that you might be able to answer. Um, we have seen now um, that you used bicep modules that have been stored in the same path as your deployment file or deployment bicep file uh, was stored. Uh, is it somehow possible to use a remote path to access your, your bicep files? A remote file like uh, available on the internet or or, or a path? Uh, for, for, well, both, both to yeah. make it a, a bit more complex for you, <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, every, basically everything is possible if that's uh, allowed to say, but the path, the path uh, rule, uh, route is actually the simplest one. So you will, if you just paint this down here, you can see uh, if I go, you can go up of course to intro a last parameter and function i can just call this this one instead and then the intelligence it will of course say that this doesn't work because this file does, has, does not have these uh, parameters so uh yeah everything is possible uh, perfect Thank you. So you can build kind of a, a folder structure to organize your modules, but then without any issue reference to the different modules that are stored in different folders. Yes. Very good. Thanks a lot. All right. Um, so for now, there's no more questions. So let's continue or close the session with the slides. Uh, it's just a few more. Then people still have time to uh, to ask questions. <clears throat> All right. Where is it? There we go. Good. 
So as we said, we will publish uh, the recording together with all the other recordings and you can um, easily access the, the full playlist by using uh, this URL. Um, and this contains not only BICEP live streams, uh, but also um, some recordings we did last year for uh, ARM templates. I think that's also five, four or five recordings we, we did in 2020. That's also available um, using this, this URL. And then um, look out to the next and unfortunately already the last live stream. This will be uh, on October 6. And then we will talk about pipeline based deployments. So uh, for now we've seen how we can well deploy bicep files from the command line manually. But if you want to bring this into a standardized process, then uh, we might need pipelines. And this is what we will cover in that next uh, live stream together with one or two other things. So I just mentioned some some fancy keywords here. So we will also cover a little bit or quickly uh, a thing called template specs and also a uh, linter to um, to well to, to complete that full bicep story. So uh, stay tuned for for all of these these uh, awesome topics. And that said, um, I see there's still no questions uh, appearing here. Um, yeah, what do you think, Martin? I, th I think that's it from our side. Then um, we'll close the stream here. And yep. uh, yeah, we're looking forward to to have you back in two weeks for the last uh, live stream. So thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day or the night or the evening and uh, see you soon. Thanks. And also thanks, Martin, for the demos. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.